welcome, welcome. So, with my recent thought of this fountain of the deep thing, and then having the, like, snake feature here, snake feature here, to the point where I named one of my recent episodes Jorm Munger Mungender. <laughs> I named it this. And uh, then recently, one of the Wikipedias mentioned Ragnarok. Ragnarok. And I was like, what does it say? So I started reading it. It's pretty short. So I thought I would react to it. It's literally pretty short. Someday, whenever the Norns... So this is my thoughts. Is it Ragnarok? I'm like, what is this? Ragnarok. Ragnarok is a the cataclysmic destruction of the cosmos and everything in it, even the gods. When Norse mythologic... Uh, I was going to have to say mythological mythology is considered as a chronological set of tales the story of ragnarok naturally comes at the very end for the vikings the myth of ragnarok was this prophecy of what was to come at some unspecified and unknown time in the future but it had profound ramifications for how the vikings understood the world in their time Okay. Um, fate of the gods. In the apparent play on words, some pieces of Old Norse literature also refer to it as the twilight of the gods, or the fate of mankind, and a host of other names. Okay, without further ado, they say, here's the tale. So someday, whenever that day may be. So my thoughts before I get into this is, could this be the Earth's expansion process instead of being about, like, Judgment Day kind of prophecies that it seemed to be more in the future in my interpretation, like an actual future? This one, I just interpret as I'm reading it. The possibility, I'm reading it through the lens that maybe it did already happen because of reasons. Okay. So, someday, whenever the Norns, those inscru inscrutable spinners of fate, decree it, there shall come a great winter. So, great winter, uh, we've been talking about the, the Missoula Flood, which is highly related to glaciers. So, I mean, it's possible... I mean, it doesn't quite fit, unlike any other the world has yet seen, which does fit, but then the biting winds will blow snow, blah, blah, blah. On, this winter shall last for the length of three normal winters with no summers in between. That, that there is a little off. Like, uh, essentially, I would say the biblical interpretation of how long the flood took is more like the length of time of that um, of the expansion of the earth although maybe maybe it was much longer and there was a full three year period of this cold but that's I don't think the bible even suggests anything of that nature so I was thinking maybe even though it doesn't make any sense Maybe even though it says three months, three winter or three winters, maybe it's like three months having winter and summer within them somehow. Something maybe to do with the moon, like in, involving some energy flow that led to winter and summer and some other angle of perception that made it look like it's three years, but it was actually more like three months, which is more on a biblical time frame. I don't know. That was just a thought I had. I know it kind of sounds ridiculous, but as we keep going, there's a lot of weird things that align in ways that are like... Okay, anyway. Mankind will become so desperate for food and other necessities, so this kind of sounds like the flood time leaving only the bear struggle for survival. Okay. The wolves 
Skull and Hady, who have hunted the sun and the moon through the skies since the beginning of time, will at last catch their prey. The stars... Okay, before we move on to that, let's just... Or the stars too, well, I guess we can just read this one because my interpretation would be that like, if the Earth expanded process, maybe it plotted out the stars so that two will disappear, leaving nothing but a black void in the heavens. So that, that part's just kind of like maybe, maybe it happened. It doesn't really tie into the evidence and the Earth itself as much. Um, although maybe I don't understand its meaning. And then the, the tree of life, the great tree that holds the cosmos together. How do we say this? Pronounce. Languages. It is said as Yggdrasil. 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 Sure. Yggdrasil. Okay, so we got we got the wolves who hunted the sun and the moon through since the beginning of time through this through the skies will at last catch their prey the stars too will disappear leaving okay. and then yggdrasil the great tree that holds the cosmos together will tremble and all the trees and even the mountains will fall to the ground the chain that has been holding back the monstrous wolf fenrir will snap and the beast will run free Jormungand, the mighty serpent, who dwells at the bottom of the ocean and encircles the land, will rise from the depths, spilling the seas over all the earth as he makes landfall. So that, that there, that's when we come back to this. This here comes out of the here and goes up here and has a snake head. Out of the depths uh, is the snake coming out of the depths of the ocean. How fitting is that? And then it later goes on to say something else that I will come back to. So that so my first interpretation so far is that maybe these creatures are also maybe maybe it's real. Like it also happened in like a true narrative of the story type of way but maybe it's reflecting like Jormungand is reflecting this current coming out here and going this way at the least and maybe others okay so that was a thought and then the wolves skull in Haiti who have hunted the sun and the moon through the sky since the beginning of time will at last catch their prey so I've been talking about the Colorado Plateau. In the past, I've kind of mentioned the, these ears and the eyes and the nose. So it kind of looks like a wolf or some kind of like similar animal, like a fox with the red because of the colors of the stone. But um, maybe a wolf, I was thinking. I've, I've thought along the way. and. The, in my like last episode i looked over here and i saw it's like is that like a wolf i thought is that like an ammonite but like if this is a ammonite and a wolf maybe this is also an ammonite and a wolf so if we notice though if this is its nose and maybe these are like hands like it's literally got a disc clutched in its like clutched that it is at its mouth like did it did it catch a sun or moon in some way and so maybe this is also a wolf catching something so like maybe like this looks like an eye or sideway a side angle where this is like the mouth or the sorry the nose and then like the, the brow or whatever ear I maybe another year like this way ish somewhere and then again though it's kind of like it's biting it's more like Arr! got like a hold of this like thing here Arr! So, so it's almost like this one caught maybe the moon and this one caught like grabbed onto the sun of like Yellowstone and like the all the energy that's at more so over here that it's like 
just grabbing the foot of it hurt. Almost like I had to just grab it somewhere. So that was a thought I had. So that's interesting that there are like not only two wolves nearby that are one of them's got a circle like in its mouth and the other one seems to be grabbing something so that kind of fits that this aspect um tree of life we can come back to then fenrir the chain that was holding back the monstrous wolf fenrir was snap and the beast will run free mind you this is at the kt boundary when this is happening and what else is happening at the kt boundary is this storm the doom shape that started here it was hanging out here for a long time maybe like it was chained in position and then it breaks from its chains maybe or maybe it's chained in position here I'd, I'd say maybe here because of just the difference and effects on the terrain but then at some point it basically breaks free comes over here and then just creates widespread destruction in the region and influences the region so maybe maybe a thought some as we'll go forward and see there's more reason that fenrir actually ties into the doom shape storm i'm just envisioning some, uh, some aspects of it without being able to reference it yet uh, i didn't initially have that thought until later but these are less far possibilities. These convulsions will shake the ship, the, the nail ship free of its, a nail ship that Loki and giants, an army of giants, the forces of chaos and destruction will be its crew of this ship that will be composed of fingernails and toenails of dead men and women, apparently. Uh, whatever that means. I was thinking the composed on the fear, like, a, nah, nah. Like they like they're feeding on the fear of the people that is like driving them in some way. I don't know what to make of it really. Uh, its captain will be none other than Loki, the traitor to the gods, who will have broken free of the chains which the gods have bound him, in which the gods have bound him. Um, maybe we should open that one. Will with fire blazing from his eye, Fenrir with fire blazing from his eyes and nostrils, will run across the earth with his lower jaw on the ground, lower jaw on the ground, upper jaw against the top of the sky. This is why the doom shape kind of came to mind then, because it's spanning to the cosmos and then from the ground. So it's literally like, ah, and destroying, like it's carving a path here. It's etching. And then it's also got tendrils to the cosmos. Pro it probably like really uh, just hurricane-esque, but like category, whatever. 10, I don't know, something ridiculous, category something, hurricane, that's not just a hurricane, it's like, got a nucleus that's like fiery, it's fiery, the doom shape is described as fiery, so like, um, somewhere it's a fire blazing from his eyes and nostrils, so another thought when I saw that was maybe instead of there, it's more in the same area, nostril, I was thinking this is an eye. I don't know if it, this doesn't quite fit it, but it was more in the same area, so I just thought I'd mention it. It also has horns. I feel like Loki frequently has horns. Maybe one there too. Um, Jormungand will spit his venom over all the world, poisoning land, water, and air alike. So if there's, like, this outflow, maybe it's also, it's not just water, it's got, like, a lot of, like, what made the ocean salty kind of stuff. And maybe other things that just change, change things in ways, poison, maybe poisons the air to, like, literally 
reduce the lifespan of human beings. Like, we don't even know any better kind of, kind of way. <clears throat> the dome of the sky will be split. From the crack shall emerge the fire giants of blah, 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 blah. With a flaming sword brighter than the sun in his hand, their leader will have a flaming sword brighter than the sun in his hand. So this made me think of... What's that? This made me think of, like, the tendrils coming from the doom shape. Like, it's f uh, creating just these arms of fire if you read the egyptian mythology about the doom shape and uh, it talks about that kind of thing which made me think of that being these like giant fire giants as they march across by frost the rainbow bridge to asgard this really caught my attention i don't know if i should even mention it <laughs> it's because it might be just it's kind of ridiculous but the bridge to Asgard, I know of some bridges, like the Krishna built a bridge, and I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure Krishna built a bridge here that's been destroyed. Like, there's a destroyed bridge here, and a good chance it was destroyed by this doom shape like in the region, which is really odd. It caught my attention. So then, um, home of the gods, the bridge will break and fall behind them. An ominous horn blast will ring out. This will be Heimdall, the divine sentry, blowing the Jaller horn to announce the arrival of the moment the gods have feared. Odin will anxiously consult the head of Mimer, the wisest of all beings, for counsel. The gods will decide to go to battle even though they know what the prophecies have foretold concerning the outcome of this clash. They will arm themselves and meet their enemies on the battlefield called Vid Vigrid. Plain will where battle surges. That makes me think of again. That makes me think of right here almost like this area that I've been talking about because of just the collision of this and this and this stuff all this stuff going on out here like it's maybe Australia related stuff where just currents are really getting focused they're not um, like just passing through they're like getting uh, compacted there and causing just higher things higher energy things to happen um i don't know just a thought odin will fight fenrir so the, the let's just say like some that the the gods are beings and the, like fenrir is uh let's say the doom shape so he like tries to like cancel its energy, I guess, and brings all the, these chosen human warriors who have he has kept in Valhalla for just this moment. So maybe like they literally try to stop the doom shape and fail. Fenrir will swallow Odin and his men. Which, like, maybe a crazy hurricane firestorm can do. Then one of Odin's son, burning with rage, will charge the beast to avenge his father. On one of his feet will be the shoe that has been crafted for this very purpose. 
It has been made from all the scraps of leather that human shoemakers have ever discarded. And with it, Vidar will hold open the monster's mouth. Then he will stab his sword through the wolf's throat, killing him. It makes me think, like, this storm is literally, like, they created some leather thing to somehow prevent, like, to be a separator between the cosmos and Earth. Like, if they insert it enough, it can cause, like, a reduction in the effect. I don't know just a <laughs> maybe a huge leather shoe is like the shape of a shoe like a wedge kind of like a wedge that that's just gets the foot in the door to open the storm up and then stab it with some sort of energy that gets to like the heart of the storm and actually like kills it like, kills the storm i don't know i don't know why Odin wouldn't be like, you know, why don't we just use that shoe th that shoe wedge? Let's get that wedge out right now. I don't need to die. We got that wedge. What are we doing? Sorry, Odin. <laughs> he knows what he's doing, probably. Another wolf, Garm, uh, and the god Tyre, Tur, kill each other. So there's some more... Battling Heimdall, Loki will do the same, putting a final end to the trickster's treachery, but costing the gods one of their best in the process. The god Friar and the giant Surt will also be the end of each other. So Surt, I think, was already mentioned. So like a... Maybe... Even though the storm's like heart has been killed, it still has some... Energies that need to be, like undone by confronting them more directly in ways that actually kill the people doing it. The god Friar and what is Thor and Jormungand, those age-old foes, will both finally have their chance to kill each other. Thor will succeed in felling this great snake with the blows of his hammer. It really makes me think that somehow Thor is related to this snake. And this is like Jormungand. Gund. Gun, gun. This the, the other one. And that they, like, this isn't the first time they interacted. It's just the last time. And, like, currents flowing everywhere. We're having similar outcomes. They're just kind of moving. Like, a battle was raging over here, relatively, like, under Australia, and then moving, 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 moving into this battle zone, at which point it, like, erupted above the surface. I don't know. Okay, um, Thor will succeed blows of his hammer, but the serpent will have covered him in so much venom that he will not be able to stand for much longer. He will take nine paces before falling dead himself. Nine paces. That makes me think of the hot spot track to Yellowstone. <laughs> Fucking Doris Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> the currents that were behind it. Then the remains of... Uh, da -da. And adding his blood to the already saturated soil of Vigrid. Which again is like this region didn't have like necessarily 
quote, need Yellowstone to have all these features around because Yellowstone came afterwards. So adding the blood to the hot magma blood to the already saturated soil. Then the remains of the world will sink into the sea. There will be nothing left but the void. Creation and all that has occurred since will be completely undone as if it had never happened. Which maybe is when the flood happened. Like, this is the flood. Now, now that the oceans have opened, like, the water is coming out, it's building, it's building. Although, I feel like the water is draining by that point. So maybe that's a little not fitting, honestly, because it says then, like after this stuff happened, then we will, it will sink into the sea. Some say that that is the end of the tale, and of all tales for that matter, but others hold that a new world, green and beautiful, will rise out of the waters. Vidar and a few other gods, so that, like, this combination is kind of like the flood story. So it kind of gives a little more credence that maybe it is, even though it says then. It doesn't technically match the data, and they really would be preferred, but... I mean, I'm not sure this is, says then in the most, like, truest sense, because this is obviously English and translated, and this one translation, it's probably, like, useful to really look into exact wording and for things of that nature, where it doesn't quite fit the, the data... Um, I want, maybe there's another, another wolf somewhere. This one's kind of subtle, and it's almost cheating, but at the same time, it, it even has, like, the mouth. Just given all the details, I wouldn't say it's truly cheating. <laughs> it's just a little less defined. We'll have hidden themselves. And then there's some things like people will survive. A new sun, the daughter of the previous one, will rise in the sky. And all of this will be presi presided over by a new almighty ruler. Like, I am with you until the end of the age. Pretty sure Jesus says that. The meaning of the Ragnarok for the Vikings, as the above implies, two versions of the myth of Ragnarok seem to be present in the Norse sources. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. But that kind of makes it as if always is only till the end of the age. Like it, in a way, the this aspect. As the above implies, two versions of the myth. Okay. And then we're back to some not myth, not the myth itself. Okay, other things I found. Um, I read that story, but hmm, Loki turned into a fish is part. One of the parts of the story is Loki turned into a fish. Wonder if it's related to over in the. Tibetan Plateau region and a net because he gets caught in a net they catch him in a net they're like Loki's a fish someone's like why was there a burning net 
and fit like fish here. Oh, he's a fish. They, whoever was here was eating fish. Why would they eat fish? Probably because they were thinking about fish, which means he's a fish. <laughs> okay, so I I left it here for on purpose. Numerous animals are said to live among Yggdrasil's stout branches and roots. Around its base lurk the dragon and several snack, uh, dragon nidhog and several snakes who gnaw at its roots. Snake, snake. All the snakes over here are snake. Snake even here, that's not very visible. And then if I go to uh, gotta open up Google Earth, I guess. I can't turn this. All those snakes, though, are physically atop this dragon. Nidhogg? Nidhogg with the snake, snake. Another snake here, eyeball there, jaw down there, another snake over there. Bunch of snakes on Nidhogg, let's say. So we got Nidhogg and several snakes apparently at the base. An unnamed eagle perches in its upper branches. So if if this is the snakes and the and the dragon, then maybe the upper branches are here, like perching on this branch of the Himalayas is the Birdman. And it's pointing one of its wings like to uh, here where that bridge is. Eagle, an unnamed eagle, perches in its upper branches, and a squirrel scurries up and down the trunk, conveying the dragon's insults to the eagle, and vice versa. <laughs> so they're like exchanging energy back and forth from the mantle puncture hole to the location where all the energy is being focused. Opposite. That was under Australia, but then it moved into the region of Western North America. So maybe there's some sort of like back and forth energy exchange that maybe there's a squirrel shape somewhere. Uh, where would the energy exchange back and forth? I think there's an iguana type thing. I mean, maybe this could be a squirrel scurrying. Legs moving. I don't, I don't know if it's a squirrel. There's another snake up here. <laughs> Is there a squirrel somewhere? Here's squirrely, squirrely, squirrely. <laughs> I don't know if I could find a squirrel on the fly like that. <laughs> like maybe this is part of its body. I mean, the best I got is here. So let's say maybe, maybe here. Just move on from that. Okay. Meanwhile, four stags graze on the tree's leaves. Stag. Let's just make sure animal deer okay okay just making sure i wasn't sure if it is a broad is it just deer male deer 
just mail deer. Because we do have, I guess we gotta go back here. We do have this that I've called like a cow and other things, a bull. I've called it a bull, I guess, here. But maybe it's got like antlers. I don't know. Kind of janky, but eh, it was kind of antlers, antlery, I guess. <laughs> Relative to the head down here, I guess it's not the worst. One on each side of the head. Not the best either, for sure. <laughs> but at least there's a head there. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Similarly, this one's more cow-like looking this way with the droopy eyes and the nostril here. So maybe that first one at the least represents... Uh, what were we looking at? Over the tree's leaves. So if this is the base where the dragon and the snakes are, and then the eagle is in the upper branches, but then the tree's leaves are more maybe towards the middle of the body. Um, I mean, this would be probably a good location if this is upper and this is maybe the very top. And the, the base over here. Some of these, uh, I'm using, okay, that's all I read, so we're pretty much caught up. Let me see what else, did I write anything? I think I read everything I wrote down. Yeah, since I read the story pretty directly. Uh, okay. And then somewhere it says Asgard. Vertical axis would correspond to the trunk with Asgard in the highest branches. Midgard on the ground at the tree's base. And then a hell underground amongst the tree's roots. Hell? <laughs> Horizontal axis would be based on the distinction the Vikings made between the Inengard and Utengard. Thus, Asgard would be right over the trunk of the tree, Midgard around the trunk, and therefore in the middle. Okay. Let's say that there is a top of a tree, like the energy comes up and fans out a little bit. Maybe the top of the tree is kind of like this odd anomaly. Um, I need to find the video. Let's check out this video. Nothing too uh, particularly telling there. Maybe some mass there, if that's like the roots. I don't know. Okay, okay. okay almost there, almost there. Right. There's Sh Sri Lanka. Sri 
resplendent land. Ceylon meaning. Island of the India in the Indian Ocean. That's probably not what it meant. <laughs> A male given name transferred from the place name. T. Just curious if there's any weird, weird connections. Sahilan. Sahilan. I have sworn I was answering it. Oh. <laughs> okay. No. Not what I'm looking for. More like that. Why? Lanka was taken from the ancient name of the island and joined with Shri, meaning rip. Resplendent. Just land. <laughs> so you're saying it used to be called land? Island. Simply meaning island. Ah. Asgard. Island? Was was Asgard a island? Although it may not be in mythology, <laughs> freaking. It is a beautiful island realm floating in the middle of a great sea surrounded by an incomplete wall. This one says the base of the tree is in the middle of the island. Like this is literally, I'm pretty sure this is actual text, maybe not. Oh no, no. But that's probably more reliable. Let's see, let's check out Asgard and then I'm gonna just call it here. Old Norse for ass. <laughs> Which means God. Oh, that's, that's not bad, I guess. <laughs> call me an ass, can I? Well, thank you, sir. I don't. Please don't. <laughs> okay. Ass enclosure. <laughs> God enclosure. Possible. Okay, I don't know if it, nothing especially popped out. In the center of the bird with a high C for Odin and 12 seeds for other gods. Gold, both on the inside and outside, is the best of all buildings in the world. Vingol for the female gods, which is described as both a hull and a horgor. And a forge with which they crafted objects from gold. After Ragnarok, some gods, such as Valley and Balder, will meet at this place where Asgard once stood and discuss matters together. 
also find in the grass the golden chess pieces Iser has once owned. Uh, that'd be hilarious if they're golden artifacts, Sri Lanka. Chart like carving. I was just reading Odin's Discovery of the Runes. existence, function, or anything related to it is not mentioned in any historic records. It was used for a long, prolonged period in history. Second major developmental phase seems to begin in the 7th century CE. Incompatible with other carvings in the period. To the untrained eye, there are figures resembling umbrellas or bow and arrows, a kite, wavy lines, and cylindrical shapes. Why is there a frickin' fence in front of the picture? Umbrella. <laughs> it's gonna rain. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Those are really incredibly perfect circles. Okay, that, that's that's cool. That's something of interest. That is real interesting, honestly. World's oldest gold artifact was just found. Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka. Bulgaria. Nothing immediately. If there was something, like, really. This is the goddess Tara.
Novice. <laughs> Just someone calling it a novice. The mark of a novice makes me. Hmm. Okay. I literally can't copy that. Abhayagiriya Stupa. <laughs> Sri Lanka. Could it be? That would be incredible. I mean, that's probably ridiculous. It really did fit a lot of things. Like, it didn't... I've... <laughs> like, all the animals are things that I already had found in the same region. We'll end over here in this. Plus this with the it being perched on the top of the tree where the gravity anomaly is. Like it's the furthest from the base of the tree. Where it's like stoutness is. I don't know. Something. I found that Asgard. Could it be? Maybe. Maybe. Like, people would have found more things, and unless it just got covered. It's just hidden underneath, like... I don't know anything about the geology of Sh Sri Lanka. Precambrian, that's a good sign. That's a real good sign, dudes. It has to be Precambrian. Because it really existed at 550 MA. Million years radiometric dating. So just that alone is a good sign. I guess I'll be back. See you guys soon.